So today is Easter Sunday, 2019, and we are meeting for the integral chat. And uh, I had suggested either talk about the, we have done all the stages of development until second tier, to talk about the relationship between the stages and maybe, you know, uh, make a differentiation or whatever we want to share about our own experience. And so we wouldn't focus only on one, but on all the ones we want to talk about, or to talk about states of consciousness. And so the question is what, what you feel. And I think with that, we do the, the, the check-in. So I'm Heidi in, in Italy. I have already almost done Easter Sunday. I went up with the dog to this uh, mountain where I told you yesterday, where the memorial was, and I just was all alone, and it was beautiful to go up there and come down again, by feet, do some exercise, you know. And now I'm here with you, looking forward to talk with you. Hi, Jeremy. Hello. Morning, everybody. If you want to immediately check in, uh, uh, it was about what do you want to talk about, about the uh, states of consciousness or about the relationship between all the stages of consciousness which show up either in us or in what we notice in other people or whatever. Um, the relationships one sounds more interesting to me, just based on our our ongoing discussion, we've kind of been doing that implicitly, but I think this would help us like let loose and really begin to explore the dyna dynamics that we've been kind of subtly wanting to, to, to play with, so. Um. I'm sort of, I'm taking time because I'm sort of like, man, they're both like really good subjects. I'm sort of sat there like trying to make a, a decision about it. Um, I think for me today, for some reason, stages kind of sticks out. I think actually stages gets like not as much attention as it could do. Like um, uh, I often hear of, sorry, not stages, states. Um, states kind of being defined as sort of um, states of consciousness and sort of specifically like kind of causal and all this kind of stuff. And I remember like one interview with between Ken and this coach um, who was applying it. And it sort of opened the door to me because it was kind of um, realizing that states are all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. Um, like kind of states as emotions, um, good states, bad states, useful states and stuff like this. Oh, uh, check-in should be short. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, how short? Like 30 seconds? Um, yeah, states then. <laughs> yeah, I'm also, I'm interested in the states um, in relation to the, you know, difference in them between the gross causal and subtle and um, how that might show up and how to differentiate that between what sometimes get people mix up states and stages. And then also just to throw a monkey wrench in here, I just wanted to put this in as a possible topic in the future that I, you know, I, I mentioned, oh, I'm going over the time. I'll, I'll talk about that later. Well, I, I'm, as usual, I'm extremely sleepy, uh, so I'm good to talk about anything, um, and I'll, I'll wake up as we go along, and grow up and clean up and show up. I'm Karen. I would love to talk. My, my personal preference would be to review the stages uh, this, this time, as we've been discussing them for the last, what, six, seven weeks but I would be good to move on to states today, hoping that maybe we could kind of do an overview of all the stages another time. So um, my pers uh, a mild preference to stay with the stages today, but I would be very happy to jump into states too.
Okay, so we are, I, I would be uh, interested in doing the stages thing. So today, what doesn't mean that we won't do the others, uh, the, the, the states also. For me, it's more logic to do the stages uh, more intensively or after we have done one after the other. And is it okay for you that we do today the stages and next time the states? Okay. Okay, so let's just start. What did I, I noticed Karen uh, often I had to stop her because she wanted when we were in orange or something, she wanted already talk about green and, and things. Now it's the possibility to to evaluate the different stages. And but always I recommend to you to to bring it back to your own experience because as I said before to Karen, um, for me the interest is not only to know about it, but to realize where, in which stage I am in at the moment or in which stage the other person is in in the moment when we are in real life interacting. And I think this needs training. And so I would really like uh, when you talk about the stages, uh, give an example from real life. Okay. Who wants to start? Yeah, I like that idea that you presented, Heidi, is that when we're speaking, maybe we could identify where, where we think we're speaking from, mm -hmm. what stage. This, yes. And also when we talk about an experience where we think we had uh, uh, been in what, out of what stage was dominant in us and what the other person was when there were other persons in, involved. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, who wants to start? Um, I have quite a, a juicy one if we're talking about experience this week with the um, the crossfire call like the, the shared leadership thing I noticed that like um, I'd sort of bounce between like red and green like massively um, and actually kind of um, sort of not that well integrated like kind of bouncing between extremes like oh I'm trying to include and then the other side of it was like um, just kind of a massive amount of like fire and passion and even like a little bit of kind of um a bit like egotistical like i kind of wanted my my voice heard or something like this sort of want uh, people in power so it's kind of um felt like a real uh a sort of real embodied experience this week can you be a little bit more concrete to tell me what you mean because i don't know where you refer to um, on the last crossfire, there was kind of, uh, sort of like a brainstorm and kind of talking about debate. Yeah, I know that. But what exactly do you mean when you said there was, a, a in green and, and in red, give an example. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Um, I think to me, green as in including everybody's stuff, like including as many opinions and desires as possible. Um, and I think the red just kind of like. Um, wanting hierarchy or wanting like a battle or wanting like loads of passion. Like um, it seemed to me to be difficult to at times do that because you, you, you can kind of end up in conflict, competing over sort of what gets included. So um, yeah, that felt like a, re like a really strong charged container. For me, like I could just feel like all oh, this kind of like red charge in my body, and then trying to balance that out um, with a kind of green sensitivity. Uh, I was finding, yeah, really enlivening and challenging. I did sort of notice that watching it because I wasn't there, and I watched it, and I and there was kind of this intensity that everybody. I don't want to make this big. It was, you know, people were coming in strong with their, their, um, uh, every, a lot of people were, you know, even people that hardly talk in this group were coming in strong with some structures and, you know, uh, summarization. Except for Ryan, you weren't, you weren't, <laughs> you weren't talking that much. And I, I, I thought, wow, it, it seems sort of orange to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm seeing that one wrong but it, it looked kind of it was 
letter. Well, I'll jump in with uh, um, an experience of red I had at the What Now Conference, Ken Wilber's What Now Conference 15 months ago in Denver. And right now I feel cerebral, so that's orange. And I, I don't dare claim to be coming from an integral place either, but I, I hope I'm integrating all of this. But at the Ken Wilber Conference, I ended up bookending the conference with an excited burble at the beginning and end of the three-day conference and it was coming from my the red barbarian in my solar plexus which i have been struggling in the novel i'm writing the protagonist antagonist is he going to be the nemesis bad guy is he going to turn out to be the romantic hero and this is a novel set eleven thousand years ago this is a pretty primitive dude and i have been wrestling with this aspect that is myself in my psyche in my red aspect that I've been repressing most of my life and allowing it to come up in me in an integrated way. And I allowed it to speak through me at this conference twice, and it made an impression. <laughs> I think everybody there will remember it. It's, it's on the tape somewhere if you listen to them. But a question both times, at the beginning summer, the beginning presentation and the ending summary, and it was a question posed by Thomas Habib, who, Heidi, I think you interviewed him once in your Wisdom Factory. Anyway, and that red barbarian surged with me, how do we integrate red? How do we reintegrate power, which green has so suppressed and demonized, and yet it's coming out through green in this very negative way. And I allowed my red barbarian to come out and speak through me, and I did it consciously. And I was kind of containing it, but I let the energy flow. And he roared. He said, I want to come back from the outer darkness where you have cast me. And I sang them that song, that old Who song. No one knows what it's like to be the bad man, to be the sad man behind blue eyes. No one knows what it's like to be hated, to be faded. I mean, that came out in a roar. No one knows what it's like to feel these feelings. And I blame you. I mean... He roared. <laughs> it made an impression. I mean, people were coming up to me and like I had these intense conversations with five men who came up with me, to me for help with their own red barbarians, including a guy who was a very high level shrink from Toronto who's wearing a very expensive suit and he was shaking. He said, can you talk to me? <laughs> And he was a shrink. You know, I'm not a mental health professional, so we spent five very sweet minutes together. And so, I mean, red, red. This is in my face, in my life, and I'm trying to be a container for it and let it loose in my novel. And there's a lot of juice there. And that's, um, Ryan, that's where the sex and the violence is going. I mean, this is 11,000 years ago, but I'm trying to allow it in me to recognize the part of it that is an aspect of my own personal pers you know my own personality my own seven chakras it's just one of the seven chakras right it's just one of the seven chakras but it's been so out of balance in my life and this i should feel so be the sign that should be the sign this is enough uh, <laughs> wrap it up that's the wrap it up yeah we should have Somebody with a, uh, a stopwatch, uh, more than two and a half minutes, I think it would be. Maybe one of the things we can agree about is how long a chunk of time we take in these sessions, you know, in future sessions. And if somebody's willing to be a timer and can give like a 30 second, this is your signal to wrap up. We should more or less, we see how, how much the other share, so we should more or less uh, go into the same time frame. And uh, it's now a feedback for you, no? You would talk about your novel, and the right a thousand years ago, you have said this to us already six or seven times, so we know that. You don't need to repeat it, you know. So in that way, you would save some time when you don't uh, bring the whole context. I'm sorry that I, now I give a little bit sure. of advice, but it's exactly the thing which I hated with Ken Wilber uh, books and, and mm. books, which always begins with Adam and Eve, more or less, you know, and then you are not inspired anymore to, to listen to the rest. So just an idea to, to think about and to yeah. be concise with what you really wanted to, 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 to say about red energy and the powerfulness of red energy in your experience. Mm? Okay. 
Could we could we do like a a quick sort of judgment, like two or three minutes or something? I feel like that'd be a little bit easier. Otherwise, it's kind of like we can change it later. But um, yeah. I know I'd find that the easier. Thanks, Heidi, for the blue. <laughs> what? Thank you for the blue. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, shall we say three minutes or so, or two, uh, two and a half, I think it's the right thing. Unless it is really, it needs more when we want to want to, to know more or something like this, you know. But we are still uh, collecting experiences, so two and a half minutes should really be enough, but I don't have a stopwatch here now, if somebody can take that on. Okay. I can do the stopwatch. I have a little dinger too, but I don't know what I did with it. We usually do in our groups, we do a one minute warning and then they can wrap up. Yeah, I think two minutes and a half is quite a, bit, a long time for when it's not a real huge um, topic to talk about, but okay. Who wants to go next? I guess it's either Ryan or, or for me at this point. <laughs> Jeremy. Okay. So um, we're going to have a little timer right here. Um, yeah, since we're, we're circling around uh, um, red and and that constellation, and we're talking about red and orange and, and blue, um, again, I guess my orientation is a little different. I don't need to reorient, reiterate that. But um, for me, red has always been associated with um, Kind of the the, the sort of <clears throat> mythical hero, you know, the kind of uh, the individual who's who's going forth on this journey and and interacting with powers and forces. And, and when when that translates into my own psyche, I mean, that's navigating the my inner world, you know, the dream life. It's it's going on those kind of interior adventures and and trying to figure out how they map and and reflect and mirror my my human relationships the things i'm doing in the world so i always have a kind of you know the the, the power of, of 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 and the capacity to navigate those questions and to self-realize right to to bring out these these feelings and desires that are going on in my life so I, i've always kind of associated redness with this sort of foundational um orientation of directness that uh you know gebster talks about a little bit in the sort of emergence of autonomy and selfhood, um, which is just so vital. And it is vital. It has that kind of power to it because it's connected to, if we were going to go into another structure, I've got, I think, another minute. Um, if we're going to another structure, then it's the magical vitalism, and that's the mana and the power and the numinosum and, and all everything that's connected with that. So um, that's a whole other set of, of, of discussions. But I guess what I'm saying is it's sort of rooted in that power and that space of power. And um, and the capacity to navigate and um, impose one's will a little bit, and, and as as a way to get through the world and to get what you want or get some kind of achieve something. So um, I've just always kind of associated that way in a very kind of grounded sort of magical, mythical way. Um, but anyway, that that's just my my two cents for this feeling. Good job, three minutes exactly. Wow. <laughs> I have a stopwatch here too. So. That's good. And Jeremy, I'm really grateful that you always bring this other perspective into it because we are so, uh, by, how do you say, focused on Ken Wilber uh, uh, theory. So that's really, I find it expanding my, uh, my knowledge and my consciousness. So I'm really grateful for that. Ryan, do you want to speak? <laughs> I'll try to get out of my page here, but... Um... I'll just briefly share an experience I had yesterday where I met a woman um, who works for a, a nonprofit called Better Angels, and they basically do depolarization work in America. And we met at a coffee shop and talked about some of the work that Better Angels does. And to, I, I, from their website, they looked very integral. It's all about perspective taking and empathy and understanding the value of the other side and that kind of thing. And I felt she had very well integrated sense of like blue, um, orange, and green. The blue was from being a, a Christian minister, but I still didn't feel like she was integral, you know? I mean, it's like, I feel like the integral stage is more than the sum of its parts, and I left feeling a tad bit disappointed somehow, 
um, at least maybe because I've got spoiled from all of these conversations. But even if someone had such a good balance of first stage is integrated, it still wasn't the same as just a whole teal embrace, you know? Hmm. So um, that's something I was chewing on uh, last night. Okay, then uh, to me, I'm really interested how to, to deal with the levels which are not the ones which you are comfortable in. So experience, for instance, especially with red energy, which has happened to me last week in a really tremendous way. I always do the, the error to try to go in orange and explain. And that doesn't work because they interpret it completely differently. You know, and uh, in their way, what they are hearing and not what I have said. And I don't know if it depends that we as women haven't uh, been allowed to express red energy, that uh, we still um, keep it away. Because I have had the experience that when I enter into the red energy, when the hunters came and overstepped here my boundaries, uh, uh, in the field and the, the little balls fell on my roof and I went up out of breath and I shouted really heavily and they never appeared again, you know, yeah. so I can do that, but only in these extreme cases when it's really, you know, I'm, my anger goes like, whoosh. so for me, it's interesting how to deal with, with red, for instance, and maybe also with orange and with a saturated green. Why blue? I think I, I'm quite familiar with blue, so that would be a point of interest for me. Um, Jeremy got me thinking about red and the way that I've always viewed red, which was more in the passion and creative realms. I, um, well, you know, I was a Tibetan Buddhist for 40 years, and one of the practices I did was Vajragini, which was this red. You're supposed to visualize yourself as this red woman dancing on a corpse. And she's kind of a dakini, which means you're provoking, you know, you're kind of going out and like waking people up in a kind of a, sometimes an abrupt and even wrathful way. So it's working with that wrathful kind of energy in a way, you know, the waking up wrathful energy. Now, of course, then if, there's huge shadow with that, you know, especially even in Tibetan Buddhism, of you know, people taking that, working with passion and going, causing all kinds of abusive scenarios happening. So I don't know, it just kind of, it's always a really interesting energy for me to work with integrating, mm. you know, especially since I did this as a practice, as a visualization practice for years, <laughs> never achieved it. So. Um, it sort of seems interesting to me, like how, how complex it can get actually like i've i've had a fair few like listening to people now being like oh i didn't see it that way like i didn't see blue or i didn't see green or whatever like i saw it differently and um like heidi when you're talking about actually dealing with people like it's it becomes like quite interesting to me because um sometimes people are kind of obvious and then other times it's kind of like i think of dealing with my father who i think um, sort of probably has like red orange and blue like dynamics kind of going on and um like telling which is which um at any given moment like i might get um i might get any judgment of them wrong anyway let, like just with anybody um let alone like when they're kind of um like different parts of somebody or um uh, it might change at any moment. And I guess that kind of also extends to um, my own experience, like trying to gauge like, oh, where am I? What is happening? Is that with Paul's uh, audio? Obviously. Okay. You can come in later, Paul. So let's continue in the meantime. Or oh, am I frozen? I don't know. Wait, nobody answers here. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all you, Heidi. <laughs> it's all me. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I'll just say that, you know, I, li I like your emphasis, your question on what environment we don't feel comfortable in. And the one I feel very, the most uncomfortable in by far, and I want some advice on how to deal with this, is being in a superly overly sensitive walking on eggshells green environment where I just feel like I can't say anything or do anything without like triggering someone or like, I just feel like I don't know what to do, you know? And, and I think some people have like serious trauma or whatever, and I just don't know how to deal with it or talk or, or anything. And, and people will be bothered by little things that I do. And I, I kind of just feel like at what point is personal responsibility or whatever become important for people to take tries their best to deal with things. I don't expect the group to conform to your, or to acquiesce to your demands, you know? So that's been hard for me, especially in Portland. Yeah, uh, I, uh, for, to this, I have uh, done a, a talk with Dorothy and she was sort of supporting me uh, in this situation I had. And it's, I think the title I will uh, 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 do something like the power of the victim or something because there is for me it's a power struggle in these uh, green uh, circles which they think that their own feelings are more important than anything else and it's so opposed to what psychological uh, insight is that you have to take responsibility for your own feelings and whatever the other people say they can be rude yeah that's maybe not good but when you think you have the right to put all the blame on the p person who has said something, <laughs> it's just, it's just not, you know. So we need to, um, to find a way to contain this because it's very, very unhealthy way of being in the world and being in community. Making other people responsible for your own feelings. Oh, this is three year old or two year old to do that maybe. But as adults, it's absolutely, for me, unexcusable inexcusable i guess okay that's my i will post this in our in, in the damiano platform before i publish it so if you are interested i you can watch it i mean i have that same issue and same uh you know curiosity ryan i just wonder is there a way that we can inspire resilience in people you know because i go in with prison you know you talk about trauma and everybody's traumatized and everybody you know i know and it, a woman said to me yesterday she felt she had ptsd because someone asked her to greet her guests that were coming because she wasn't going to be there and she's she's used the word ptsd which ptsd is some a little more complicated than somebody asking you to open the door for guests and so it's sort of like you know because i work with prisoners who actually do have trauma <laughs> there's some horrible things that have happened to them. And then there's, and then everyone else on the planet has some sort of trauma. And then we have to be super sensitive. The prisoners, you don't have to be that sensitive because they have a lot of resilience. They have a lot of sense of humor. You know, they've learned how to like, you know, you know, they have this innate strength, you know, and, and they, they're sometimes they're super happy being in prison, you know, happier than me. So it's like, how do we inspire resilience in people so they can feel their own strength and they don't have to feel so like, oh my gosh, somebody said a word and I'm going to melt, you know. Okay, I'll set my timer for two and a half minutes here. Um, yes, Heidi, I really resonate with what you were saying and, and Ryan and Kate, um, we're, we're on green now and the the one of the negative sides of green, which is this hypersensitivity and making other people responsible for my feelings. And Heidi, I have come to see that as a form of immaturity, which I think I'm kind of echoing what the, the, the rest of you are saying. And then first of all, how do we take our responsibility for ourselves? How am I going to deal with this? And living in Berkeley, you know, I'm, I'm in the thick of it too. And I've, I've kind of, at, at, in my 60s, I've kind of come to some peace with it and just kind of what's on them, what's on me is kind of a, I guess I've just kind of learned to, this is an automatic sorting process. It's just part of my day like breathing. But um, my less functional way of dealing with it is just to withdraw kind of in anger and say, okay, well, I'm just not gonna deal with you people at all. I can play quietly by myself just fine. But that's not the healthiest way to deal with it either. So, you know, coming to some kind of healthy back and forth, keeping my own boundaries firm, working through with 
the three, two, one process, all that, all those tools have been very helpful for me. And I, and I can kind of, I can enjoy my life in Berkeley and go about my day and deal with it. And anyway, at, in, in my sixties, I have come to, I feel like I am in some kind of peaceful balance with it. Over and out. But it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, let me set my timer here. There you go. Um, so yeah, speaking speaking of green, um, I, I kind of want to bring attention as well to the, um, and I've been mentioning this frequently in a lot of discussions because cultural wars and cultural fragmentation is just a, sort of in everyone's minds these days, what to do about it, how to solve it. And um, I really have to speak to the, the, the architecture of our sociability that's been um, uh, engendered by the tech world, right? Um, the, the people who are designing these social spaces uh, have particular foundations of their own consciousness orientation that they're working with. And I think that is playing into and feeding into some of the devices, divisiveness that we are seeing today is like what we might call perspectivalism or what Rushkoff would talk about, you know, like getting back on team human and being more kind of human oriented with long form discussions and designing our technologies of communication to reflect that. I feel like that's so important um, because we could be as conscious as we can try to be and as um, uh, encouraging as we can be to individuals that we meet online or on Facebook and so on. But, um, you know, it, the, the fact that our environmental surround is kind of designed to create um, these cul-de-sacs where people kind of gather together around one idea and have their own information bubble and then fight other people. You know, uh, we're, we're kind of fighting an uphill battle right now. Um, the other thing would just be uh, to, to, well, this actually came up in the Peterson <laughs> um, uh, Zizek debate, but Zizek mentioned something interesting, and I know I have about 45 seconds, but it should be enough. Um, that a lot of this cultural heat and sort of, you know, posturing and attacks and, 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 and not allowing people to say things and that the really kind of doubling down an identity um, is in a sense, a, a failure to kind of go directly at the situation and transform the culture. It's kind of like an overcompensation in another direction. And I found that to be interesting. Something rang true about that for me in terms of what we need to really be focusing on right now, which is ecological and economic transformation. And if that's intersectional, then great, but you know, anyway, so two and a half minutes. I'm curious, what, could you say more about what we're supposed to be focusing on now? Oh, just, just economic and um, ecological crises right now with like Extinction Rebellion and, um, and really kind of rethinking our, our socioeconomic legal system to be more distributive and, and, uh, and embodying these kinds of holarchical and networked forms and styles of thinking and value systems that are more human oriented and more non-human oriented. And um, I think we have a lot of great potential, but the system's stuck where it is. And so we're kind of, we're, we're moving out of the kind of the systemic um, uh, 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 engagement to transform it and moving into these other spaces where we're talking about, you know, identity and those kinds of things, which are important, but they're disconnected completely now from, from the kind of, no, fundamentally, we need to rewrite society and we're not able to do that. So we're kind of moving adjacent to it. And I, I, I found that that was a very good insight from Zizek uh, that I appreciated very much. Um, I know I was I emailed I was emailing with Tom Murray and he said we were doing talking about something integral and he said a little, a little, something I'm going to paraphrase and don't think about the just forget about the integral now we have to really deal with social collapse now. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's a symptom of of yeah. feeling of impotence towards social collapse and impotence towards actually creatively transforming our culture. Um, I, I don't want to say it, it's it's. I'm, I'm almost not even saying that in a derogatory way. It's like this, the, the crisis is so massive. We're just, we don't know how to get around it. We're going to these other spaces and doing our best, but it's at the center 
that we all feel that anxiety about that we really need to address. That reminds me a little bit about uh, struggles in a, in a couple, you know, when they blame each other about things, but this is only a battle on the surface. Underneath is, is much more important things which don't get uh, addressed. And I think this is in society the same thing. For not to have to face the real uh, important things, you, you, you occupy yourself with unimportant things. And, um, and probably that's my suspicion. It is also... Uh, helped by some forces who want it to be that people are engaged on things which are not really important so that they don't put their whole energy on the real important things. That's my suspicion. I'm a little bit in, let's say, conspiracy theory, uh, but okay, so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the center of gravity. It's like the, the Pepsi commercial performing that whole thing about revolution or whatever, uh, or inclusiveness. It's It's... Mm, it's it's not really, you know, and it, again, and identity is so important. It, what I'm challenging or questioning is just the overemphasis on it and what, the fact that this is what we're completely embroiled in. Um, there really needs to be more connection with, uh, Jamie Wheel had a recent talk about this, or the, Robert Wisdom posted something about it. Um, just how, you know, if, if this can feed into social transformation at, a, at the most systemic, powerful underlying level, then great, then use identity for it. It just ends up, sort of getting stuck in these battles and, and, and discussions about representation and everything, which again is important, but in moderation and in context of the whole. Yeah, and I would say important, uh, as in green, nothing is important, more important or less important. We have to relearn to know what is really important at the moment. And uh, yeah, okay, I think our five minutes are over, or our three minutes. Uh, Paul, do you can you can you speak now? Can you try? Hello. Um, yeah, I was waiting because I didn't really have uh, anything to say. Although I kind of do now. I, I'm not sure this is entirely related to what people were saying, but um, I found sometimes about something about blue and suffering, especially like really like difficult stuff, like really kind of for me, kind of bitch slaps priorities, especially with green. Like I've had a few experiences where um, I talked to a friend who's, who sort of has like a, a, a sort of horrific problem or something like this. Or um, I remember looking at a sort of charity for sex trafficking and this kind of stuff. And like, it's so put into place to me, like um, I suppose kind of pettiness, especially of green. Like it, it really kind of like stood out to me, um, sort of real, pro real problems or at least like, um, uh, putting things into perspective something about that that's actually something I've been thinking about of sort of um, moving out of green and being like involved in the actual world I think does a great deal to sort of um, get a better understanding of like the hierarchy of things like what's actually more important um, or actually making making decisions rather than kind of endless sort of navel gazing and stuff Can I ask Heidi a question? So I think a lot of people appreciated your post on the forum, where are the women? And some people, including Corey, was very appreciative that you had mentioned that. Uh, I wonder if other people also wanted to say something, but they felt too hesitant or too like, maybe like hesitant that they would be lambasted as some green kind of person. But I'm curious for you, since you brought that topic up and it's obviously important to you, um, and since we're talking about like identity and stuff, do you feel like that, where are the women that that's coming from a teal emphasis on identity or green or I'm just curious about that for you. That can even come from a red uh, position because there is still the anger that women don't step up in, even in the, in the society uh, which is allowing them to step up, but they don't. And they obviously, uh, there are two things on it. And on the one side, they don't do the, the work which is needed to step up. On the other side, there is also this, uh, this, this expectation that they act like men, sort of, and that's not. 
we we think we should act like men. So the, it, there is a sort of anger that we haven't come together yet as women to figure out how a um, feminine way of approaching the things could look like. We try every now and then, but it's still not, you know, m maybe we fight for, for becoming leaders or something, but we imitate still the, the traditional leadership style often, you know, so it may be a little bit mixed in all of that, but I do see that the motivation, uh, the inspiration for saying that is because I see men talking in integral life. I saw men talking on the conference everywhere, you know, uh, some few women, but you know, and then I saw, for instance, as an example, in the in conference in Hungary, there were maybe not 50-50 of women on the podium, but let's say at least 40 to 60 in the workshops were many, I think even more, more women leading workshops. Not so much talking, more workshop leading. And in the audience, for sure, we were balanced. You know, so uh, the question is, how come that in America it's still so male dominant everything is it that you scare away the women <laughs> i don't know you i don't mean you you know but the the way how integral life is uh, is, is organized uh, or what is it so my position probably was not completely integral in that <laughs> well i appreciate you saying that though because i mean that's that's fine right i mean it's still it's still like a, if it's a good point or good perspective to emphasize, even if it's red, it's still important to include red, right? And I guess this a follow-up question for you would be, when you, when you don't see a lot of women being represented in integral circles, what, what's, how specifically is that problematic for you? So for example, when I don't see, when I see a lack of people of color in integral, it doesn't bother me that much unless they're talking about racial issues in which I feel certain perspectives are just not being included. But if they're talking about like science or so, I don't care at all. So like for you, how does, in what way does it actually bother you? It doesn't really bother me, but I think we women could do a better job to change the way discourse is happening. And we don't. We sort of still try to adapt, you know? And my idea is that we need to have a counterbalance to the masculine energy in the world if we want to change the world, you know? And we sort of don't do it yet. On the other hand, it's a short time that we have the possibility really to step up. And I wouldn't be a politician uh, and step up in that way. I'm, I, I'm fearful. I, I know that. I couldn't do that. So I have an understanding for that, you know. But maybe I'm asking for getting, providing, inviting more women to try out what could be a, a different way of, of doing things. Maybe it's that. Yeah, we need, it's, it's, in this, we need some help. Okay, Kate, do you? I think it's also the resilience issue again. I mean, you know, there's, a, there's all this stuff that women have to deal with that men don't have to deal with. You know, look at the women politicians, they all get their hair criticized, their, you know, their pantsuits or whatever. I mean, it's just kind of this attack on their physical presentation and women's, their, their voice is too masculine. I mean, you say they want to, they want us to be like men. I think they want us to be more like girly girls, you know, and you're supposed to talk all soft and be feminine or something and sort of submissive or I don't know what it is, but if you, but if you're coming, you know, like Hillary, oh, she's so strident. She's so intense, you know, like you're not supposed to be that way, girls. And it's just this whole kind of objectification. There is a massive amount of stuff that w gets attached to women. And then, and it's like the root causes of that are what? And then on the other hand, we have all these urgent issues, the environment collapsing. And it sort of feels like the women just thing just gets like pushed to the background a lot. You know, now it's much more about the gender, you know, the, the Me Too thing came out and then immediately you know, it turns into intersectionality or, you know, all that sort of thing. And there's no kind of, it doesn't ever get solved. If, if It's not to be solved, but, you know, it doesn't seem to advance much. A little bit, a little bit. Kate, so, oh, sorry, go ahead, Jim. I was just going to say with, um, with Heidi's comment and then your question, Ryan, that, um, yeah, I, I think I think in the integral community we may feel um, 
I mean, I don't I, because I I'm, I have a little bit of a fire spirit in me, and I like to kind of go, no, let's let's do something different. But um, in general, I do sense it even in social spheres that we're afraid to kind of like make a green statement. We're, we're afraid to kind of to go there because then, oh no, are, are we are we in that group that's going to call everything problematic and not allow you know? So there's this sort of hesitancy to really kind of engage in that language and mentality. Um, because we've, we've almost created a container, a safe space from that, you know, from being able to openly discuss these things. So when that enters here, we're kind of afraid of this sort of being deconstructed or, or called out or, and, and, and embroiled in those kinds of discussions. So I'm just kind of like, I don't know, speaking to understanding or empathizing with that ambivalence here about kind of raising that issue. But I think this is a really good space. We're talking about weaknesses or, or, or spots to kind of explore that are a little sensitive. This is a really good spot because uh, we want to be able to engage those discussions in a meaningful way that would speak to somebody coming from that culture um, while addressing other things, right? While it's sort of talking to other things. So talking about women representation in the integral movement, yeah, that's like important. There's a discussion going on in the psychedelic community as well. Like why are all these psychedelic personalities a bunch of males, you know? And they've been that way from Huxley and Leary and on and on and on, McKenna. Um, so, you know, it, it's something to, to discuss and explore and I think um, integral at least is a good is a good container to do that um, comfortably so it's just my point there and, and then I guess I'm talking too much but uh, and then you know when that whole thing came out about toxic masculinity that was announced by the APA that now there's this category called toxic masculinity then like the week later Ken did that episode on uh, something and he went into this whole big long thing about it isn't it's <laughs> did you see that one he went into like female toxic toxicity and he you know instead of the masculine uh, male toxicity it was the female toxicity and they went on and on and on about it you know that it was some sort of thing that we need to be talking about now and I wrote to Corey I said this is maybe true but it's kind of weird timing for you to be you know like <laughs> You're not going to even talk about that masculine to toxicity. We're going to go right back to it's the women's fault. Mm -hmm. and, little, and little tone deaf. Little tone deaf. And then Corey says to me, well, do you want to talk to Ken? And I'm like, no, I don't think Because <laughs> he didn't know what to say. It was kind of like, okay. No, I'm not going to talk to Ken about it. I, uh, I think I disagree a little bit with that. Like, I, I agree with the thing of, like, taking the, um, the narrative that immediately moving it onto, like, toxic femininity. But personally, my stance is that... Um, in terms of the, like the gender war, it's kind of um, uh, men who don't get represented, which is kind of a bit of a sort of controversial issue. But if you sort of look at like <laughs> the way that um, feminism and men's rights doesn't even really have a word in it, it gets treated as like um, like a hate group. Um, it generally gets ridiculed to how on the media and. Um, Personally, like, because I've interacted a little bit with the men's world, like, I came to a point where, like, um, my stance is that I think any debate around gender never really makes any sense unless both sides are included. Because um, they're so related. Like, um, I think toxic masculinity and toxic femininity tend to go together. Like, if you look at a relationship, um, it's that kind of thing. Or, you know, if you have a, if a, a good husband and a good wife, as it were, they tend to kind of empower each other. And um, personally, I see this like massive vacuum in that. And I, I think Integral like, really needs to do that to try to, because it seems a bit like sort of, um, well, I suppose literally yin yang. Like it, it's both, it should be both. And um, yeah, as I say, personally, I think it, it um, should be spoke about like together in that context. Otherwise it always ends up as this kind of like a red war uh, between one side. Yeah, Paul, I was going to say too, and, and really quickly, um, I think part of this has to do with with the, the immoderate release of some kind of individuation or self-expression, right? So if we were just talking about this, where are women leaders in the integral movement represented? You know, there's a lot of dudes on the stage. So um, I think naturally that creates a desire to sort of compensate for that and to bring it up. And then a kind of an energy 
um, a kind of an, uh, what do you call it, overcompensation for that lack. And that overcompensation creates the count, creates the Wilbur uploading, well, what about men? So it's this sort of chemical reaction where this comes on strong and then the reverse comes on strong and they're not, at, there's no kind of middle space where everyone is going what you're saying, which is, well, you know, we should be kind of a yin yang thing or a dynamic or an integral human being, which is masculine and feminine and all the genders in between that or outside of that, whatever, like we don't have that. It's just this sort of volatile culture war where one side is exploding in, in its desire to, to represent itself and express itself and have that freedom and uh, change society so it has that freedom. And then the counterbalance to that, that's only seeing like, oh gosh, men are being attacked everywhere. We need to stand up for men now. So it creates this sort of unstable chain reaction um, that, uh, that I've seen happen, you know, for the past 10, 15, 20 years, just sort of growing up into these culture wars um anyway so it's a tricky situation because it is so volatile i guess is what i'm saying you said a very important word you said gets attacked and this points for me to the fact that we don't have a conversation culture in this culture we we we, we use really attack as normal, we think that's normal. I mean, not we, obviously, but in, 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 in our world, it seems like a return into uncivilized ways of being together. And I'm wondering how, how come, and how can we try to, 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 to help a, a, a more civilized culture come back again without the negative part of blue, you know? So, whoa, yeah. That's, that's I, a heavy one. I was gonna say, I have a, um, for now, pulling it back to the spiral dynamics, I, I think uh, one of the things I like about, because I was thinking of Crossfire, because I know Ryan, that was like one of your, your points was about people actually being able to model a debate where people are just trying to like viciously chop each other down and win for the sake of it, where you can have like um, a degree of a sort of personal vulnerability and like you're allowed to be flawed as well as, um, um, I, I guess I hear like, I, I, and I agree with you, Heidi, I think like where a conversation is sort of, should there should be like new content should come out of it. Like people should be more informed, like there should be new opinions um, come out of the conversation rather than just this kind of back and forth where it's just this kind of war. But um, yeah, it kind of, um, in terms of the spiral, like I suppose I sort of enjoy at times our purple tribe that not to like be too grandiose, that we're, we're not doing anything like world changing. But on the other side of it, I, I do sort of see like um, things being kind of of service that are being talked about or that are being uh, brought forth. And um yeah, I was just having a uh, having a moment to sort of appreciate our sort of purple, uh, little purple kind of sunk group of people. Yeah, Paul, I have the experience with purple people there. You can deal with them very nicely. And Karen, I'm happy that you are unmuting yourself because I wanted to encourage you not to stay silent now for the whole session. <laughs> Okay, yes, let me set my timer. I've been retooling the factory here. Now that we've defined the parameters, I'm trying to retool my whole thing because, Heidi, I think what we're doing here is kind of a groping toward what you, what you said, which is how do we, we recreate at a next higher level a community of communication? And that's what we are trying to, our purple tribe is um, co-creating, and I love it. Um, to a point that was made a while ago, um, the great breakdown we are in the middle of, Jeremy and others, um, I have parsed this as a cultural historian. We are in one of those great transitional eras where old structures are breaking down in massive ways because the next new era is emerging and old structures have to break down in order for the new structures to be able to concretize and realize themselves. But as the old structures break down, there's a regression as well as a progression. And I've analyzed this in great detail and that's something we can do on some other forum some other time. Um, we are in the middle of something huge. Um, these transitions in human history tend to take the form of dark ages 
They get faster and more concentrated every time. We are in the middle of a dark age that is very concentrated, massive changes happening, massively fast, faster than it's ever happened before. But that's the way everybody's felt who had to live through one of these dark ages of transition. They've always sensed that the world was breaking down. They went through the, we've done this six times before. Uh, we'll do it again. Something new and wonderful is emerging and we collectively, our tribe is helping to create the new era. Yay us. I'm, I'm curious if this is similar for the rest of you, but um, in terms of, this is sometimes the uh, difference I see sometimes it's second tier versus first tier, as I talk to a lot of people, and if they, if they talk about this sort of existential state of the world, it's like really nihilistic. Um, and I kind of think like, the only people I, I talk to who genuinely have a positive view seem to be integral, integral types. I'm sort of curious if that's just something on my end or if that is like something people share. Oh, that is totally typical of these ages of transition. And I can, as a historian, I'd have to go research. I could come of every era of transition. Everybody, 99% of the people are running around saying the world is ending, the world is ending, and they've got a lot of good reasons for saying it. But then there are the people who end up bringing in the next new era because it is the breakdown of outworn structures that have come up against their own shadow sides, dark sides, inefficiencies when things start breaking down, that forces a new evolution. It's extreme, so in the world of biology, extreme environmental stress forces the next evolution of life. We are in extreme stress here. Of course, most of us, I mean, even we too, I mean, we feel it in our guts, you know, um, this is dire, but that forces us, that gooses us to reach up for the next thing. And I'm confident I've seen this even before human history, just the whole history of the universe since the Big Bang. Um, the next new era emerges. We've got a 13.82 billion year track record here of new levels of structure and complexity emerging. But part of the pattern is 99.9% .9 of the people are sure that everything's coming to an end now. That seems to be one of our cognitive biases. So just to, by word of encouragement, this is normal in an abnormal time does is is that i hope that's coherent i'm not so sure it's a 99.9 .9. i mean i'm in a lot of other groups i'm in this group of develop they're developmental coaches but i don't think that they're integral per se and they there's 10,000 people in that group that come to these things over 10,000 and they are all very much into something new you know emerging and but it's they're not you know like uh, nobody ever says teal or anything like that <laughs> yeah um i i'd like to speak to that as well because um sort of I've, I've sort of been at this sort of uh intersectionality between the like the the larger we could call ourselves the consciousness culture you know i mean like religions historians of religion and religious movements will look at the integral movement and go oh yeah this is one group that's sort of connected to the human potential movement that's sort of connected to transpersonal psychology that's sort of connected to the psychedelic counterculture because they develop different modalities and healing modalities so there's this sort of constellation of and, and i think a lot of us in all of these different communities are adapting some form of um uh, transition message in terms of complexity sciences. That's another thing that, that people talk about. That's another forte that, you know, they may not know integral, but they'll know complexity science and dynamic system transformation. So they're coming at it from that angle, bringing in some ecology. And then the, you know, you'll find Wilberians and integral folks in the mix and vice versa. So it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty big. There's a lot of different people talking about this. Um, and I really like Jem Bendel and um, his his discussion is a little it's it, it's bordering on nihilistic, but um, he came out with a, a paper basically saying that um, uh, you know ecological collapse is now nonlinear and runaway. So even if we all did everything that we needed to do to stop carbon emissions, it's it's a actually out of human control at this point. Um, that the system is already destabilized, we're going to have to go through a transformation, no matter what. And uh, for him, he's going, this is a great opportunity to get local and bioregional and 
think about what he's coining deep adaptation. So that this, now this is the discussion going on right now. Like, okay, maybe we should disengage, but then at the other, at the same time, we've got the extinction rebellion folks who are kind of like throwing their bodies in the machine and trying to stop capitalism and industrialization. And, and this is a comic that just came out of like, you know, um, the earth being, there's just like this dry ball being pushed, uh, uh, by you know a, an army of of machines and trucks and cars and industry and the other side of it there's like all these people trying to hold it and push it back um so we, we're kind of exploding all over the place and it's nuanced and it's complex you know some people think the best thing we can do is drop the whole system and focus on bioregionalism um and regenerative economics and regenerative ecology and just teach people how to feed themselves because within a generation all of our social structures might collapse, you know, and the other side is going, well, no, there's a chance we could really reboot this and do like a new green deal. And I'm kind of in the middle. I'm just sort of watching all of these things and, and I get their importance. But I think this is the context that you're, you're speaking to that, that we're in right now, where everyone is talking about this, um, not just in their gut. But now we're trying to express it. So it's really interesting times. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we're talking about kind of moving into this other phase of our existence. And for, for me, it always comes back to like, so what the hell are we going to do as integralists? Like we have probably the best map I've ever discovered that describes everything, like literally everything, <laughs> at least it tries to. And I still don't really know like what to do. And, and when I was um, creating my slideshow of like the spiral through history thing, the teal, the integral part was by far the hardest part because I don't know what the heck is out there that I can that I can put into the teal section, um, other than pictures of Ken Wilber and models of integral. So, yeah. so I, I appreciate you know like Heidi and and Kate you know this this emphasis on like practical application, communication with people of different stages and 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 how and something that I notice is very powerful too is just the way that people frame anything right is is can be more powerful than the content and, and for example the guy that i'm backing andrew yang for the 2020 election he is very very similar to bernie sanders in terms of policy but a couple of differences but the way that he frames these kind of these policies in, in a more teal way not in this first tier divisive way he has so many trump supporters right wingers white nationalists supporting him simply because of the framing is more universal. And so I think it's not only, I think as integralists, we have to not only think about what is an integral solution or what is a teal solution, but how to even reframe first tier solutions that, so that they actually apply to the most people. And I'd love to hear people's thoughts or advice on like, you know, concrete <laughs> ways of moving forward with this too and, and really visualizing what that's like. Here, here, I'll jump on that and set my timer. Um, I love the visions of the Bernie Sanders and the Elizabeth Warrens, but I am profoundly concerned about their very green antipathy to capitalism and industrialization. I think it is unconsciously but profoundly elitist. If we deconstruct all of the capitalism and go completely local and regional in our feeding ourselves and so on, that is prescription to plunge us back into second, first and second tier poverty. We cannot feed the world population on a beige and purple infrastructure. Um, the people, this, the bottom billion, the bottom 2.5 billion are kept locked in poverty because they are energy poor. Um, we, we do not serve them by deconstructing capitalism. We could serve them by making cap the forces of capitalism serve our higher integral and higher vision. They need, the people who are in the bottom half of humanity socioeconomically need more blue and orange, not less. And so I think we need to be very careful how we go about deconstructing our structures at the level of global capitalism, global big business, high finance, and so on. If we just take them apart, we plunge 7 billion people back into dire poverty. And the planet cannot feed 7 billion people, let alone 9, at a purple level of infrastructure. 
So this is my great, I'll just, uh, where am I on my timer here? Um, this is my grave concern with some of the very green um, politicians here. Um, and I think I'll stop there. There's something to me about, like maybe there is these like really um, amazing integral uh, movements that can be that can be done. But there's part of me that's kind of like, um, isn't just kind of like about getting up and doing stuff. Like if you're integrating, um, like even two spheres of knowledge or something like this, like you're already in some ways making a more um, improved system. But there are so many people with like that kind of battle over like one one side of it versus another. Like for me, I often thought about. Um, therapy, physical health, um, martial arts, just off the top of my head. Like, if you actually brought those things together, like for example, because I've been, I've spoken to plenty of people in therapy where there's, there's kind of, there's all this emotional exploration to improve, um, make them feel better, all this kind of stuff. And there's a little bit of sort of physical stuff for sort of like medication or that kind of stuff, but that's a bit of a sort of clusterfuck of various things with orange. Um, but if they just brought in like more knowledge of physical health, I mean, that would, and that's just like one thing. And I think um, I sometimes see this sort of, I think it's exciting integral to like do these like huge things that are going to be revolutionary. But I also think the, the other side of it, which maybe doesn't get enough um, voice is just like doing pretty sort of more down to earth stuff of integrating things that already exist, just bringing them together in better relationships actually makes them, um, makes them a lot more powerful. Here, here. What I think about this is the actions are taken already, a lot of actions, but they are not often very well thought through. And especially it is also how you do things. I, you said, Ryan, that this person is, who I don't know because I'm not in American culture, is uh, using the same principles, but he is uh, saying it differently. And I think that would be our, our, our task to find ways where we can do and say the same things uh, differently, which people already try, but get always stuck and uh, you know, create more upheaval than, than, than less. So for me, it's more about the how what we need to figure out and not so much about the what, because the what we know more or less what we need to do. I would say, I would like, I also would vote for Yang <laughs> just because um, I saw that uh, comparison between him and Mayor Pete that I know a lot of people in Integral are going, oh, Mayor Pete, Mayor Pete, Mayor Pete. And they did this video of the two of them. And I thought, oh my gosh, Yang just like speaks it straight out. You know, he just like, I think that's one of the reasons Donald Trump got elected because he was just willing to say whatever pops into his head in a straight, you know, language that anybody could understand. And Yang was just so clear about, we're going to do this. We're going to, you know, and it just, and his, he, he looked, he's this businessman. He knows how to do that, you know, whatever he was proposing. So I thought it was really great. The other thing I was just wanted to loop back to is Ryan, when you asked the question about talking to green people that are kind of, you know, wanting to run away, is there any way that we could do something like a practice group or something where we practice on communication skills about how we actually, I mean, I know that I think NBC, I, I've had, got a lot of training in NBC, but I do think that there it's, it's, it's useful to meet green people with the NVC, but then you got to go a little deeper to, to, because green people will move off that thing to something, you know, they're green. We're, we're all green. We will move off of it, you know, because <laughs> we have the capacity to. So I think what, how can we practice these kind of communication skills and try them out with real life scenarios that we come up with on a day to day basis? I, I, I want to respond to what you said, Kate, and then I want to hand it off to Paul, because Paul, I know that we've talked about this, and I know you're excited about this, but my, so, but just specifically, my problem is if someone becomes triggered or traumatized, and it's very obvious, and I say, what can I do to help you? What do you need? And they just say, I don't know. And that's like, I'm like, okay, like, really? Like, what can I do? I don't know. So I just, usually at that point, I just like get in my car and drive away. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. And, uh, and, and part of it is like, I don't know how to deal with 
people who are, I don't know anything about trauma. I don't know a lot about psychology. So that's not my area of expertise. But my other problem too is that I do feel that, as you were saying earlier, kid, about the PTSD, but about something that was very trivial and like kind of bastardizing the term and catastrophizing. And I do, I mean, if I sound, this may sound judgmental, but I do think that there are legitimate or illegitimate forms of trauma or, or misapplications of the term. And some people may see that they're triggered or whatever, but it's like they're not, I don't know if they are, they're really that bothered or if they're just kind of like, because because in Hawaii, there, as I said, there's a lot of green, but there's no ideology around being triggered or whatever. So people don't get triggered, like, right? So it's it's a weird thing, but I love your idea of the practice group. And Paul, you want to uh, say your thing here? Um, yeah, I'm amazed you didn't mention it because I thought you were, you had this idea. I just wanted to jump in because you mentioned trauma. Like, um, yeah, I, I think that would be great if like there was a debate around that. Like, I think that's a really important topic. I think Green fucked up um, where they kind of have the best intentions, but they don't really know how to deal with it. And um, I think this was your I think this was your idea, Ryan. But um, Kate, when you were talking about like, oh, it, is there a practice we could do, or is there a way of actually engaging with people? Um, I think Ryan, you were saying to me like literally just grabbing somebody who's kind of a great voice of a certain level. Um, I don't know exactly how it works or if this would be practical, but kind of like almost just having a guest and we just talk to them. Um, we kind of like get off the integral cloud and be like, let's just um, see if we can have a really great conversation with somebody at possibly a certain stage. Um, Cause I know in my experience, sometimes I can get annoyed at lower stages, but sometimes they're more, I mean, they embody it more than I do. Um, like, I don't know if that would be entirely practical to, to do it, because I suppose it's hard to find someone in a stereotype. But I suppose the other part is just kind of like, I suppose to be fair, the, the way you get better at dealing with any stage is just talking to them, I would think. Like, I'm often driven crazy by greens. Um, but then again, I kind of become a lot more green while I'm doing it. They become, like, less annoying. And I, I think I embody more green so i suppose for me it just comes back to the thing of again of just like just doing it just practicing i suppose the reason i proposed a practice group is because i've actually run nvc practice groups for about 10 years and the practice group is sort of like running a meditation group you don't you don't meditate so that you just walk around in lotus position all day long you meditate so that you go out and you have some awareness and you, you do the practice group so you can bring your scenarios and then you're not actually going and practicing on people in real life situations when you don't actually know what to do. That you've actually, you do it with a group, then everybody gives you feedback, you know, everybody jumps in with their ideas and then you try it again. It's not like you're gonna be out there doing these formulaic things with people though, but it does kind of seep in where you're like, oh gosh, I remember that. In the practice group, it gets really intense with people, but you know it's a practice group. You know, it's not like real life, like we just bring somebody in and then, oh my gosh, we're going to practice with them and they don't even know we're practicing with them. You know, so it's kind of, it's just a container that helps you really develop the skill, the skill of it. It's a skill development thing. How does that, how does that work? Is that like a forum? Like you're talking to people at Integral that are talking about dealing with green? Like I'm no, sort of... it's actually a group and people come together and they bring something that they, a conversation they were in in the week and they just, and we kind of, practice doing a, an empathic response or how you might respond to the person and then we see the pitfalls that happen like you can see immediately if someone sometimes one word will put someone in defensive posture and for example if someone's traumatized what you do then and and there's there are skills for what you do when someone's traumatized and it doesn't have to be therapeutic school skills either you know other than running into your car so yeah. you do a sort of role play, no? That somebody well, takes over the, the role of the one and we sort of know the, how we behaved in previous stages of development. So it shouldn't be too, too difficult to take on a role. Now, I would be very happy because I'm constantly in front of this difficulty that I, or I'm too green in, in the situations and don't, uh, um, don't allow myself to safeguard my boundaries and or, or step up in, in, in time uh, to, to, to say no, things like that, you know, and I would need some practice in this. And understanding the stages is really good, or the stages of development, because, you know, for example, words like needs like belonging and inclusion, those are different stages of development. 
belonging came way before, like belonging to the club, before we got to inclusion of everybody. And so sometimes the belonging thing is really up in somebody. And then you might say, you just want everyone to be included. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about they want to actually feel like they belong. You know, something is activated at that stage, triggered at that stage. So it's good to kind of break those um, needs down or whatever you want. You know, needs is a weird word, but break down those things into different, to see which ones are really bright in, in each one of the needs. And then you can talk when that's active in somebody to where they're at. It's a great skill. Yeah, I want to jump in briefly here. Um, Ryan, my li very limited experience with NVC has already given me tools, practical hands-on tools, to be with somebody who's in crisis. And it basically gives me something I can do instead of jumping in my car and be with them. And I, but my experience is limited. It is a skill set. It's a very specific recipe, but it's much more than that. It's a specific, it's like learning to play a musical instrument or riding a bicycle or cooking. The more you do it, the better you get at it. I would be delighted to start a practice group. And I would nominate Kate, if you're up for it, to, um, this is, I'm just throwing out, thinking off the top of my head. Uh, I, I am thrilled at the idea of an NVC practice group that is moderated by somebody who really has a lot of skill with NVC, who can coach us through a group of people who are aware of stages at the level we have collectively arrived at. Wow, I would be so up for that. Yeah, that's, that's great. I, I do these on Zoom, so sure, yeah, we could have a group. Works well on Zoom. So maybe you can invite us to these two meetings which you already have, or do you do you would you like to yeah, do a different one? Of course, but yeah, I'm willing to do or start. You know, we could share. Uh, Natalie knows and Tim know a lot about this, so we could. <laughs> and I and I know a little bit. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I like that. It kind of seems like we've um, we stepped into that. We kind of come out of like this really. I wouldn't say exactly theoretical, but sort of like generalized thing with a spiral. And then to actually deal with people like, I'm thinking of, I mentioned my father was stuff like this, like to deal with like really direct relationships. And then, um, and then bring that into a sort of NPC or something like that. That's like a lot more close to the bone, like a lot more um, embodied and stuff. Wow, that was a, a good run today again. We are eight minutes before the half hour. Uh, so, I would invite you to go to the checkout and share what was important for you and what you, you know, your thoughts are. I would say not more than two minutes because otherwise we overwrite the time. Well, my check out here, Heidi, one of the most useful things anybody has done for me in a long time was the feedback you gave me. That was hard to hear and I did NVC on myself, but that gave me a clear set of how I can retool my factory to communicate more effectively. So I say thank you sincerely. And I hope something comes of this idea with Kate, if you're willing to take that on, that would be the fulfillment of a longstanding dream of mine. Um, um, and if this is a uh, more burden than you care to take on, let us know if we can take on some of it because I would love to see a practice group happen. Thank you all very much. I wanted to say uh, I appreciate being able to, um, in, in some sense, I, I'm the little weird alien that's come in and and like Paul was saying like let's go talk to one of these people out there like but I'm not at the same time so I'm just enjoying um each week where there's something that I have to think about in a new way and then also I have to find a way to communicate back and forth with you guys I'm sure it's the same uh, the same feeling so um I'm, I'm generating a lot of insights from these from these discussions and I appreciate them Um, I've been kind of appreciating like the, the way that a certain container will like really guide the, the conversation. Um, like that's kind of been a bit my spiel lately. And I found like Heidi, just you emphasizing at the start to keep it like a lot more personal and experiential. So like, you didn't say much, 
But for me, the the call felt a lot different. It did feel a lot more personal and like direct to the experience. Um, so I was kind of enjoying that. And then um, I appreciated what everybody was saying and sort of being more practical. And for me, for, so I was kind of, I don't know, I was having this blue thing, like being a stickler for the, the rules of the container or something all the way through, which I think is sort of related to this thing of like appreciating, um, uh, like keeping the container what it is, I think is a sort of preference lately. So um, yeah, just sort of personal flavor of like where I was at through, uh, through a lot of it. Well, uh, oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, this has been uh, really great. And uh, yeah, thanks Heidi for the crisp blue timekeeping. <laughs> um, so I said two things I want to mention. One was, uh, so this Thursday for Crossfire, I posted something for Dami on Damiala's platform about please list all the topics you want to debate or want to see a debate on. And hopefully we can schedule one in uh, for this Thursday. And then uh, if people want to set them up in advance several weeks down the road, that also be helpful. So people have a lot of time to prepare and we can see like, oh, you know, like June 23rd, we have Karen versus Jeremy or whatever. So think about that. And also um, I like the idea of this other group and, and we kind of had a conversation about another group that came out of this conversation. So I also thought that since there were other groups being mentioned, like Karen mentioned like the uh, campfire type of group, also on Damiano's platform, I'll start a thread on different groups people want to see. And then people can just say, oh, I think maybe this kind of group would be nice, a communication practice group, a support group, a campfire group. And then we can kind of decide if we want to start another one or how we can plug them into existing dates. So uh, I'll send out an email to remind everyone too, and then direct to Damiano's. So. Thank you. Um, I really appreciated the, again, like the timing thing, but I, I, I think it's kind of interesting, like Karen, you didn't talk and then, um, because you have so much to say that's so interesting, but it, you know, I'm glad you're kind of working with that and we'll continue to step up and talk. And Jeremy, I sort of noticed you were talking faster and you have a lot of interesting stuff to, you know, really interesting conceptual stuff to say. So, you, you know, it's okay if you go over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna do that, and I just um, and just so this group was a great. It was a lot of energy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm here a little bit in the role of the moderator, so my shares of uh, of my personal things are a little maybe less than I, it would be when I was uh, only a participant. But as I said, I will post this. Uh, experience which I had and which I talked about without naming too much integral because the person I spoke uh, with um, is not uh, very familiar with the terms so but I think she is in that level and uh, she's a psychotherapist and she wanted to support me in this situation and I appreciated that and I try to put it into context so if you want to to listen to it I haven't posted it yet but I will post it on the on the website then you can see and it's my inability to really um, recognize in time red energies and red center of gravity and respond to it and being triggered by the want to help so um, that's that's has been so often in my life and so i did this whole show conversation about that and i really appreciate kate if you do a, a group like this because i i need desperately good ways of dealing <laughs> with these situations which i don't get i get more you know freeze uh, <laughs> response and not do anything so it was very enlightening and I'm really happy that you show up and that we can do these conversations, which you don't find anywhere else, you know, in the groups I was so far, I didn't have anything like that. So very much appreciate it. And we see on Thursday for the crossfire then, and hopefully we find out what there will be. So we have to head over to the Damiana website. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Take bye. care.